How does he get his so high? So today we're gonna to be making a print in the dark room. Uh, this is a favorite negative of mine from when I used to live in Savannah, and we're going to send the print to Matt Mirage. You might be familiar with his channel, aptly named Matt Mirage, uh, because a few of us have gotten together to do a little print exchange between other film-focused uh, YouTube channels. So it's gonna be me, Matt, uh, you may have already seen Roger over at Shoot Film Like a Boss making a print to send to me. Uh, we have Nico of Nico's Photo Show and Azriel Knight, Hashem from Pushing Film, and Borat from uh, Top Shift Photography. So keep an eye on those channels this week and you will see all of us make prints for each other and then tune in in July when we make a video of receiving our prints. So that should be a lot of fun to see what everybody does to react to the prints that they're being sent. So let's, uh, let's put on the apron. Uh, we've already got everything mixed up here. We just need to put the negative carrier in the enlarger and we should be ready to make a test strip. Come on. All right, let's go ahead and get the negative in the enlarger. And when it comes to filtration, this is not a new negative for me. I've printed this one a few different times, but I've always made a contact sheet. So this is gonna be the first time that we're enlarging this particular image. The typical contrast for me is a grade two or number two filter. However, that's on the Ilford Classic. Now we know from the print developer uh, comparisons that we've done before that Ilford Warm Tone, which is what I'm gonna to use today, is a stop slower and a full grade lower. So if I've printed on grade two, then I'm going to have to make this on a grade three. So I've got somewhere the uh, Ilford multi-grade sheet and for a DeVere and larger that looks like 50 magenta so we're going to adjust this to 50 M and we're going to leave this just at uh, F8 we'll open it up to check focus but otherwise F8 will give us pretty much the best uh, sharpness for that lens this is a uh, Schneider Componon S uh, 300 millimeter lens for the 8x10. Okay, so we've got our contrast. We'll start with that. Uh, that should be a good starting point for what I know this negative, what, what I like the prints to look like. We may adjust in the future after we do our first test strip. So we've got our stops. Uh, let's change this to three seconds and we'll do three second increments. And that's it. Let's turn the lights out and focus and make the first test strip. So here we are. We have three seconds, 18 up here. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, and 18 second increments. And we're gonna go with this one, 15 seconds. That one looks pretty good. It looks like the contrast might be okay. I really can't tell from the increments, but what I can tell is that about 15 seconds is going to be the best time. So let's change this to 15. And that should be it. We're just gonna do a full strip now uh, in the exact same spot. That should give us from the 
corner down to that uh, piece of pipe down at the bottom. And that'll give us a good idea of whether or not that time is correct and whether or not the contrast is correct. So let's hit the lights, make that next trip. Here we are, 15 seconds. Overall, density and contrast look pretty good. So we're gonna go with that. Okay, so it looks like the contrast is good. We don't need to make any changes there. Uh, what I do need to do, however, is dodge the little pipe. Um, it is just a touch too dark. Uh, it comes out almost completely black and it shouldn't. It should have some texture. It was a deep, brown, red, rust color. Uh, the wall was a light yellow color. So the light gray for the wall, good. The black for the pipe, a little too dark. So we're gonna dodge that. Uh, let me think, we're at 15 seconds. We're gonna dodge it 20%. So for me, that's gonna be three seconds, uh, three plus maybe. Uh, just to bring that down a touch. So let's hit the lights. We're gonna make a full print this time and dodge that pipe. We're gonna see how that turns out. So let's hit the lights. Here's our 15 second print. Not a bad start after just two test trips. All right, that looked pretty good. So the only change I'm going to make now is knock it down one second for the overall exposure. I feel like um, 15, it looks good, but it's wet and it's gonna dry down just a little bit. So let's take that down to 14 seconds, which is not quite 10%, 10% would be one and a half seconds, so I'm taking it down about six and two thirds percent. Um, not a lot, just enough to really um, give the highlights a little bit of, of brightness once it does dry down. So 14 seconds, we'll keep the same burn time. Uh, I don't think that needs to change. And that should do it. So it didn't look like any real dodging and burning other than that piece of pipe. So I'm going to leave it alone. Um, if I remember right, because it's been a while since I printed this one, I don't believe I had to dodge and burn before. I think it was pretty well exposed and lit. Uh, so there weren't any real like hot spots or light spots, no fogging on the edges. So um, 14 seconds, a little bit of dodge on that pipe. Grade three, so 50 points magenta for a grade three filtration and pretty straightforward. Let's make that final print. Here's our final print, and it looks pretty good. This is exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah, I've got really good, um, really good tonality in the light parts, which tend to make up, well, don't want to wrinkle it, the light parts that make up the higher tones of the wall. I've got good, let me walk my fingers down here, good detail down here in the dark uh, portion of that 
drain pipe without it being blocked up and just a black hole of nothing. So overall, what I am judging on this is how do my high values print? Do I have decent separation between tones? The high values are where I'm going to evaluate my exposure time. The separation of tones is where I judge my contrast. If this were just uh, too dull and the uh, midtones, which there's a lot of different midtones in here, if, if they all blended together, that's not high enough contrast. Finally, once I had everything right, I knew from the test strip that this was going to be just too dark. So we went ahead and dodged that and it came out perfectly fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and do my final steps of uh, HypoClear, Toner, and Final Wash, and we're done. And that's the print done. So uh, it is a little bit of a cheat knowing that since I've already printed this before, I kind of knew where I wanted to start. If this were a first time printing, I would have to do a little bit more test strips to get the contrast nailed down, but we didn't have to do that today. Otherwise, this is the basic steps that I take every time that I make a print. If there's any dodging and burning, I would do that as well, but I really don't have to do a whole lot of searching for those uh, with this particular, uh, this particular image. But I'm pretty pleased with it. It's one of my favorites, as I said, from the time I spent down in Savannah. And hopefully Matt will enjoy the print. I don't know what he's going to do with it. That we will see in July when we uh, should all have our prints from each other and make our reaction videos to them. So I will see you next week and tune back in. Keep an eye on that for July when I get my print from Roger and we will react to that one. So until then, we'll see you next time and go check out Matt's channel to see what he's up to.